Hi, Kislein. How are you? Okay. How are you doing? I'm okay. Thank you. Yeah. How's your semester going? Oh, uh, except for one class, I think everything else is overall okay. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah we're halfway done. Hang in there. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping for so I'll have to turn it around with the um, the Python IO, the, um, IoT class. Okay. So that, uh, I guess I, I could somehow pass it because it seems that the it, it, it has gone to that point where, some point where just looking at the videos seems to be I can't get whatever he's doing in the videos. I can't seem to implement it on my machine. So I'm not okay. sure why. Did you ask him? Oh, well, I just kind of assume he's like, if I'm following, I'm, I'm assuming that he's just gonna like look at the videos, which is basically what I'm, what I'm actually doing, following exactly as he's doing. But then for mm -hmm. some reason, the, um, yeah, it just doesn't work. So maybe I'm, I'm, I'm just assuming that I'm missing something. So I'm just going through. Or sometimes he had installed something previously on, on, on how he, you know, because that happens to me too, right? Like sometime when I troubleshoot it, I might have not documented a step or included that in my video. And then that kind of generate the issue for the students. So I think if you come across one step that didn't work for you, I think you should ask um, and see what, what, how he's going to come back and be able to help you troubleshoot it. And so that way, you know, because if you don't, if you can't get through a certain point, it doesn't work, right? So um, I, I suggest that, you know, take a screenshot showing your error or whatever it is and explain to him that you tried following the tutorial that he provided and it's not working out for you. I mean, maybe you can ask for his recommendation on how to fix it. And so let's see what he says. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I suggest you do that. They, he should be able to help you with that. Um, I'll, I'll okay. try that for this week. <clears throat> see if I, if I do it early enough. Okay. All right. Well, if anything that can help, let me know. Okay. Thank you. For that. No problem. I, I'm knowledgeable in Raspberry Pi. You know that, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah, let me know if I could help with anything. Hi, everyone. How are you? So, we'll talk about the lab today in a few minutes. Um, I wanted to do a lot more with it, but I think not having the foundation with database might impose challenge for you. So that's why I wanted to keep it kind of basic today. Um, and then I can, I'll talk about the options on how you can scale it out for, you know, web server and, and things like that. Um, but we'll, we'll give everybody a couple more minutes. So if you want to check out um, lab nine, I posted it this morning. And the, the steps are pretty simple. I tried to make it where it would be easy for you to follow. Um, and without having too much challenges on your system. Now, if you're using Linux, um, it will be much more streamlined compared to using Windows environment, but similarly, you can achieve the same thing, okay? So we have like about another minute before people join us, so. Okay. Check out lab nine. We'll talk about lab nine and what we need to do and then how that will correlate with what we were talking about with the assignments and then um, we'll go from there. Okay, so now it's, <clears throat> it's two o'clock. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I went back and forth on this lab, like four or five version, as you know, because 
um, I wanted to make sure that you understand how to work with database um, and then also with the framework that we talked about and how to implement some of the things um, that would be useful in, in, your, um, in your future career and so on. So without having to really get in depth with database, we are going to cover the concept on how to implement um, the extension of Flask and to incorporate that with all the lesson that we've been learning. So I'll go ahead and take you to screen share real quick. Um, so this is lab nine. I originally wanted to do this with more Flask um, and you know, just to be able to give you be a better understanding on how to address some of the issues that you might run into. But um, as I was going through and writing down the step for you, I felt like you need to get a little bit more understanding on how to set up database. Um, now you can use SQLite for sure. And SQLite would be, um, I added that here, but SQLite would be something that you can build out, you know, with the web server and I'll touch on that. So in this particular exercise, it really emphasized SQL account, uh, uh, SQL Alchemy. And this is an extension of the actual framework that, um, that we're using. Okay. Okay, that's no problem. So with the exercise that we're gonna be doing, we are going to use mainly shell. Now you can build um, an actual program. I'll show you what that will look like. That or multiple modules that will be able to <clears throat> give you a full web app, okay? So one of the things that um, I was working on previously would be something like this. Um, and you can use something like this for your server. So um, in this particular file, what I'm doing here is I'm setting up, I'm um, using um, SQL Alchemy with Flask, and then I import in you know, additional module to be able to build out my database. So in Alchemy, we know that we can actually create a database with the columns and table and then we can add decorator on how we want to be able to save roles and, um, and content of our database. The challenge with this is if you don't have the proper connections um, for your database, you will run into issues in to be able to display or access your database from the web server side. So this is why I wanted you to follow this tutorial, um, the tutorial step here so you can have a better understanding. So coming back to this lab, what we're gonna be using is we are going to use SQL Alchemy. So you can simply use your command prompt. Let me reopen my command prompt so you don't see a bunch of weird things there. And we can simply change our directory to desktop and you can go anywhere that you want um, and put your folder there. So with that, I can make a directory, mkdir, and I can call this uh, lab nine, okay? So I have you create a directory. And when we talked about this on Monday, we said that we wanted to keep everything organized. Because when you start looking at your packages, when you wanted to build, what you will do is you will be able to write your Python file and then be able to create your database and keep everything in a working directory. And that's important. Now, if you use VS Code, it, it is a better way to organize it so you can make your project folder in there and be able to do that. So some IDE will give you that capability. Now, the reason why that we're also making the folder is that we are going to use the virtual environment and with Flask, it's, it is a better way to really achieve that, right? 
Um, so I'm going to call this something else. So let's do lab nine um, practice. I'll just call it that. Okay. So now once I make the directory, I'm going to go ahead and change um, my directory or my path to that directory. Okay. So I want to make sure that I'm in it to be able to access the virtual environment. Now, um, so, so far, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make a folder, okay? And we want to change our directory to that folder. Pretty simple. Now with, um, so in the exercise, what it's gonna do is it's gonna only create uh, the tutorial that's provided to you is it's only going to uh, create a small database that's going to be stored in your temp memory. Now, if you wanted to scale it out and you wanted to implement SQLite, what you will need to do is you will need to download it. And the way that they package this is that you have various versions for different OSs. So for Windows, you have to download the zip file, both of them, because you would have the actual tools, and I'm sorry, the, the command line tools, and then also the additional DLL for those tools. And then with Linux, you would need to download this zip file, and then it gives you the instructions on how to be able to use that also on Mac OS. Okay, so it is a little bit different than the other tools that you're using. I know some of you already play with SQLite before, so you might be familiar with this, right? So I included that there in case if you wanted to really make it where you would have a database that would be a SQLite uh, database, okay? Now, if you're using only SQL Alchemy, what you can do is you can save it as a DB file and it will just be stored temporarily to a location. And then you can make that scale out later on. Um, so the practice that we're gonna do today is a little bit different than this in that we are gonna use our shell to be able to um, add in the components for our database. Okay, so after you create your directory, you will need to in install and enable the virtual environment. So if you've done that before, you can, you can just enable your virtual environment. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'll just repeat the step, that way you would know, okay. ENV, and that it tells you to, I forgot, have, okay. And this will take um, maybe a minute or so, okay. So once we issue this, what we will do is we would then activate our, uh, virtual environment. So you wanted to do ENV, okay? And the reason why we're doing this is when you test your scripts or when you build it out, right? And if you wanted to implement Flask, you can quickly, you have to turn on your virtual environment and be able to really see the effect on the Flask side, okay? So the next part is we are gonna activate it. just like what we did in the assignments. And then, oh, I have a syntax. Okay. So now what I have here is I am now in the virtual environment. And from here on, what you can do is then you would be able to install your Flask, Flask SQL Alchemy. So as you do that, what will happen is it's gonna put the directory ENV here, and then it's gonna tie your scripts 
right, to that, okay? So when I install, what will happen is it's gonna put in the library packages, okay? So here's your site packages as you install and then all the additional resources that would be with your virtual environment. So that's what you want because in order to really scale out and test, we can add additional components to our web app, right? And then like we can write additional module and be able to run it. Now, if you wanted to use SQLite, then what you would need to do is after you downloaded the zip folders, you have to unzip them. And the three files that you needed to copy are the SQLite 3 EXE for Windows. And I'm only illustrating in Windows now, right? And then the SQLite 3 Analyzer and the SQL DIFF. So what you would need is you would need these three. And mainly if you use SQLite 3, you need this executable to be in the directory in order for it to work. Okay, otherwise it would not be able to understand if you're using uh, if you're using SQLite. Okay, so that's important to make notes of, and that's just aside from what we need. Um, so once you're in your virtual environment, the next step that we need is we are going to use Python shell, and you can use it directly here. So we can do Python. Now, if you're using like idle or um, you know, your IDE, you can definitely use your shell there. But the way that I, I wanted to organize all my components of my class and my, um, my database, I wanted to keep it together. I forgot to mention that you need to install. So let's do that before we go to shell. So we need to do a pip install class class alchemy. Okay, so with this, what we're doing is we are installing Flask, right? And then the extension of Flask. So in the last, in the last uh, assignment, what we did was we only use Flask. And in this one, what you want to do is you want to also install SQL Alchemy. Okay. And you can find that here. So I'm at step eight. Okay, so once I have it installed and that what that will do is we talked about how it would bring in all the dependencies, the packages that you need, Jinja, right? Um, some of the additional, it's dangerous, Jinja. And so these are the packages that, that you would need. Then after that, then we will call up Python shell Okay, and once you access the shell, it will be like this. And to, in order to get out of the shell, right, you can just do an exit function like this. So you're familiar with that and that we have done that before. Um, so now after we call up shell, then we would go to the tutorial step. And I wanted to walk you through this a little bit so that way you can understand what's happening and how you can take this content and be able to implement it for something that you can use down the line, okay? So this is the documentation that's provided by for SQL Alchemy. Um, and at the beginning, it talks about object relational mapper um, that would be using the method that's associated what you define in the Python class. And this is important because if you don't have this, um, when you define additional classes in your Python script, it will not be able to work, okay? So your ORM needs to be really constructed and um, that's a way where you would be able to use the SQL expression and how you would be able to, you know, query and use pattern with SQL. 
So here it talks about how your application would be successful if you construct your ob object relational mapper exclusively. <clears throat> and, and when you look at tutorial online and things like that, a lot of times they talk about this, right? But they don't really walk you through the, the tedious details and on how to set it up. So I wanted to take this opportunity to really show you. So after you install SQL Alchemy in order to use it with Python, right? You would then import it. So we can do it with the interpreter with shell or we can simply write it as a program and then be able, but then you would have to link it like how we would do it with the set app flask to that Python file. And when you have multiple Python files, what you can do is you can import in other modules to your main driver file and be able to use it as an entire package. So um, in, in a case where if they wanted to do like an app where you would have an interface to be able to input user accounts, right? And their information, what you can do is you can have multiple files and then an, a couple HTML right, uh, document and tie them together and then host it on your either local server or on your test server, development server, and be able to do that. So we'll start with importing SQL Alchemy. And so once you're in shell, you can begin import SQL Alchemy, okay? And if you don't have any syntax error, you just get to the next line. And what you can do is you can follow it. And so after we import, what we can do is we can check the version, right? And that's the version that you install. And you can also see that in your, in your virtual environment when you install it, it will tell you which version it is, okay? So then after you check the version, what you can do is you can, create an engine. So here we define an object, right? Which is called engine. And keep in mind that when we import in this, right? We also need to import in the specific from SQL Alchemy in order to achieve a certain task. So in this part, we are truly connecting. And without this, you will not, even if you create a database, if you don't connect it, you will not be able to get it to work, okay? So in some of the tutorial, what they do is they actually show you how to create the database, but if they don't, they have a separate tutorial to show you how to connect it. And if you don't connect it, it will not be able to be used on whichever server that you're trying to run it out of, okay? So that's important to, to make note of. So in this one, what we're doing is we are keeping it in the memory only, okay? Now, in the case where if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to make it to be used on a remote server, okay? That's what the book, the textbook is showing is Eric Chu, he, he puts it on his server, right? And then to be able to, to store to update the database to store the information about the routers. So what you will need is you will need to set up, you will need to configure um, SQL Alchemy database URI, okay? So you need to set up the configuration keys and the binds, okay? So without the configuration keys and the binds, what will happen is your database will not be connected to that server. So that's important. And the way, so they give you the, 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 the format on how to do that here. So you can use SQLite with it, as I mentioned, and then you can set up whatever you wanted to call your, your DB. Or if you wanted to tie it to a remote server, right? You can specify right, how the login for that on that remote server. So if you use it at home, you can say local, local server, or you can put in the location or the name of your host, and that will be the database that would tie to it, okay? So it would look something like this, okay? So if you create the object, 
then you would have to configure and you can use the configuration to be able to establish, right, your, your, uh, the location of your URI where that, that will be stored, okay? So in our lab exercise, what it's telling you is that it's only gonna be placed in the memory. And SQL Alchemy is very tiny, right? Like we talked about how it's very micro. Um, what you see is gonna take like maybe a couple of megs even when you started adding content to it. So here, what it's doing is it's showing you how to connect, right, to, to the, the SQLite database, okay? And you need to use create engine method and you need to specify what type of database it is. And Alchemy is, we, we would use Alchemy with SQLite, okay? And often you would see that Python uses SQLite. And it's, it's, you know, you can use MySQL, you can use Oracle SQL, you can use Microsoft SQL, but SQLite is gonna be the very basic that we can start with, okay? So that's what it tells you here. Um, then you're gonna keep you shell, okay? Or you can write out in a large program and then link that program. Um, and the next step after you can you, you establish the connection, you have to map it, okay? And here it talks about how when you use ORM, the configuration process would start with describing the database and how we would deal with in our own class. Because when you write those classes, it needs to be able to map to your table in the database, and that's important, okay? So in a larger scale, when we put this in practice, what will happen is you will have a Python file that would be used for configuration. And then you can use another Python module to be able to add content to your database, and then a third module to do a query, okay? So something like this, okay? So you would have the configuration where you would set up your environment path, right? And how you would be able to, to set up the join for the directory and then your configuration key, okay? Now we would bring in Environ here from another module. So what you would see is it would be able to work with the class, uh, the class object that's coming from a, a separate module, and that's what it's saying. So it's important that we have some form of configuration, and you, you see here, we would have the URI, and then we wanted to make sure that so track modification. It's just a, a warning process so you can turn off the warning process with that because it's always going to pop up that message okay so if you keep it true then it's going to give you the warning okay so this this the configuration information you can also refer to the configuration keys uh, documentation on sql alchemy okay so in this part it talks about how you would have um, you have to declare a mapping. And with this, in this example, in the instruction, it shows you that you would have the base, which define any number for the map class. And so in the new class where you would create user, right, you define this, it's going to help you map it to base, which is declare as a base from declarative pace. So what we're doing is we're pulling from the library as we would declare the mapping for our database, okay? And I feel like I'm teaching database class right now, but um, so this kind of give you the basic on how you would set up your map for your classes. Then after that, you would then have to import. Now we are gonna build out, right, our 
our columns. So that way we would establish a database. So all the other stuff, all the, uh, the prior steps, all of that was just configuration and mapping and connecting, okay? Then after that, you when you do from SQL, SQL Alchemy import column integer and string, what we're doing here is we are building a table and in that table, it would have columns, okay? Now, this is a relational database in that you have to have a way to, to include a primary key. And that time, primary key is gonna tie to the records, right? Or the roles, the content of the role that you will be implemented in your database. So at this point, what you're doing is you are de declaring a class called user, right? And it's gonna be map, okay? To the base class. Then you are going to create a table called users. So what are we making? We're making a list of users for our networks, right? And then after that, we would have your ID, which is for, we would have the column here. And in this column, our ID is gonna be integer, okay? So it's the first column and it's gonna hold the primary key, okay? For relational database, this is important you have to have some form of primary key. If you're familiar with access, right? It's very, it's, it's kind of like that, but what we're doing is we're doing it through programming, okay? Then the second column here, what we have is we have a column called name. And in the name, we wanted to use string. So in the parameter for your column, you want to specify the attribute for that column, right? Which is first, you would have to tell it what type and that's why we import those in, okay? So you can have as many columns as you want. And here, what we have is we would have four. Next, we would have full name, we would have nickname. So in a network environment, we would then would have, right, like, account login or email address, uh, a location for password, okay, or authentication method or authentication token. And that's what we would need. So in this one, it only asks you to create four columns, but you can add more, okay? Then after that, we would define, right? Um, we would use the, the function here to be able to return, right, the content of that column, okay? So later on, when we hard code that in, you can hard code that in unless you design an interface where, you know, technician and other people can actually add it. So we wanted to make sure that we have a method that's gonna handle that, right? So we're gonna implement the method for that, okay? And for the web server, a lot of the times you can do it with HTML, okay? So you would have a function that would call that HTML file. And in that HTML, you would design the interface, like, you know, the form on how you want it not to be filled, okay? Something like this. Um, So for my HTML, I would have like username, email, bio, right? Um, if it's an admin, you, you can have it, you know, select or toggle a certain way and so on, okay? Any questions so far? All right. So after the column and here it talks about you know, it gives you the tip. This is optional. We wanted to, they show you this in the example, but ultimately your method, you need to return when you create that, okay? Now I'm gonna show you another example. Um, 
So we can we can in a, in a regular type of Python script, what you would also have instead of doing it through shell individually, you can also do the column. So you can write it into a program like this, right? You just have to specify the type, right? The primary key in the string. You can also pass the value on how many characters that you want for that string. So if I want an input control is essential, especially in the area of security. So because you don't want them to do SQL injection. So we want to limit the string to a certain amount of, of characters that's going to be input because it's going to be web based and web is going to have external traffic you know, that's going to be you, people are going to use the web to be able to, to connect to it. So what we can do is we can specify the number of characters that we want to use for our string. Okay, so in the tutorial, it didn't have it, but you can definitely use the parameter for that. Okay. Now, um, another thing that you can also incorporate is timestamp. And with timestamp, you have to import in date and time. So you would do, you know, you would bring in the module date time and to be able to use that. So a way that you can add a timestamp because we wanted to log and make sure that, you know, this user was created at this time, right? So we can also have a timestamp and then you simply would use the object with date time method and then you would then specify what will be the default if they don't fill out anything, okay? So you can have it like current time, which is the system time, okay? So that would be an option for one of the columns that you would create. Any question? Okay, then next, is gonna be the schema. So now this is really attribute of the table, right? So you created the user class. Now you have the column for your database. Then what, we, what next is that we would then specify how the table would look like. Because if you don't build out the table, then it's not gonna know what kind of content would go into that table, okay? So earlier we had defined the ID column, okay? And the integer, so what we would need to do is we would need to correlate that with how the table would organize those columns. So we would say that the table content would have these columns and the table name is going to be the users okay which we previously set up so here okay and then you would use metadata okay and you know if you look into like data science and stuff this is this a lot this is like an intro level for that you will have to build out your database collect your data and then be able to analyze so here we have ID, name, full name, nickname. You can add more to it if you wish, okay? So this would be allowing us to have schema for our table. So here it explains to you that the table object is a member of the larger collection, which is metadata, okay? And if you click on metadata, it shows you, right? how to describe the metadata in your database, okay? And you need to, you need these parameters for metadata object. You need bind, which we talked about how connection to the bind would be. You, you need to have schema and you need to have reflect, okay? So let's come back. So here it explains to you the table object, the member, it, which is a member of 
metadata and it uses decorative, right, with the dot metadata attribute. So after that, then we would have, right, we would need to create it. Okay. So here is where you have base, which we established earlier, dot metadata. And in order to really create your database, you have to use create all and pass engine, which we declared earlier. So without this step, it would not create the, your database. It would just be a table. <laughs> All right. So then it's going to tell you that it created the table of users. OK. And then the content of that table. And it's going to commit. So if I was to only use this file, what will happen is I still have to use shell to tell Python that I am, these are the configurations, these are the columns, right? And roles that's going to go into the table. And I have to create it. So I still have to issue the create all um, method in order for it to build this for me, okay? Okay. So here it comes back and it talks about how you can use values to specify the numeric number, of the, the string, the characters, that how many of the characters you wanna use in the string. And the three, the few types that they mentioned here is you can use integer, you can use numeric. So something like phone number, right? We would want to use numeric um, for name and you know location and all of that. You can use string and so on. So all you have to do is specify the type. So here it talks about how you can use a sequence. And you can construct the sequence. So in the case where if we wanted to, re that we require ID first, we can set that up. So here it talks about um, for other database like Firebird and Oracle, it requires sequences to generate new primary key identifiers. Alchemy doesn't require that. So in the case where if you work with other database, you would need to set up your sequence. And this is an example of that. Okay. And so this needs to be established before we could actually create the database, okay? So after that section, it goes into creating instance. That means that now we can enter the data, right? And, and the way that we do this is we hard code, right? We don't have an interface to be able to add the user account and so on. Now, if you wanted to implement the interface, like what I said, you can use HTML. You can also write a Python program with, you know, with GUI for GUI component, and then be able to tie that back to how you would add the data. So at that point, it would call the method from the other module, and then, you know, that way it would bring in the content that the user input. Right, so we would store it and then transfer it back to the location of the data, the database. So here is where you would be able to add the user. So first we simply declare, and you can use any name you want here, but that's part of the user class we previously declared. And these would be the columns, right, that we had we had um, established. 
So at this point, what it's doing is we're adding row, one row now, right? The first row that will be Ed, full name is Ed Jones, and then the nickname. Once you declared this, then you would access the object. So here you would have add user dot name. And then add user, add user nickname. So it shows you what you entered there. Okay. And then we didn't add anything for ID. So there's none. Okay. So after you map it, so what we talked about is we connect, right? We, we map it, we build out the table, we specify the columns in the table, then we create the instance for the map class. Okay. Then you would create a session. And here it talks about how the ORM handled the database in the session. And we need to set it up so that way the engine, the, the create engine method statement that we previously had in our step is we can define the session class. <clears throat> so this is where you're gonna do the bind. Without this, it doesn't work. Okay. So you would need to import session maker and session maker, you're gonna specify that bind is engine. Okay. And this is just the option in that if your application doesn't have engine in the module, then you can declare it. So, and after we've done that, then you would need to create the engine by doing dot configure. Okay. This is after it's available. So that's later on. Okay. So we saw that we added an instance. Then we can also change or add additional, right? So you can use a dot add, okay, to add that user. And then if you wanted to modify that, you simply declare our user and then be able to look for that user and then update it, okay? So here it shows you how you can query. So you can use a dot query. <clears throat> And if you wanted to add it, you use the dot add. So what you see in this is it's it's identical. That's what they said. So in fact, that session identified the role return the same, and it's already represented. So when you added the same content for the role, right? then it's going to show you that it's true. So these steps allow us to add the role into our table. Now below, it shows you you can do multiple users. So you can add many, right? You can add a user named Wendy. You can add a user named Mary. You can add a user named Fred. Okay. 
So you can do an add all and that will be a list. So when does this really occur, right? Um, if you look at, let's say that you have a company and they expand and they added a new branch, let's say in Arizona, and you have to add 2000 user for that branch, okay? What we can do is we can establish this, right? Um, using, and you can automate this a little better than just hard coding it like the way it's shown here, where you would have, a, you can use like a text file, you can use a flat file, right? And then to be able to bring in employees, you know, ID, username, password, et cetera, and then import that into your, your Python file or the database. Okay. So, Next, it talks about how you can look at, you can have three new users objects that are pending here. So when you look at session.new, it shows you the new users. And you can also modify an existing user. Okay. Like we change his nickname to Eddie. So we modify Ed Jones record there, right? Okay. So once everything is established, then we would commit. And that would commit your transaction. That means that it's going to store it, right? So without commit method, it will not store. And then after you have it committed, you can look at right, different attributes. So here you can use the dot ID for that user and it would show one. You can look at another user where it would show different, okay? So at this point, what you can do is you can look at the attribute for the user account. But database is made to be queried right? We, we wanted to use it for reporting purposes, analysis purposes, and so on. So here it shows you how you can make some modification with the current transactions, um, rolling back with the changes. So like undo your change, that kind of thing because mistake can happen. So after the rolling back, it's gonna show you how to query. And that's the main purpose of database is to be able to get the information that was stored, right? Retrieve it, analyze it, report it. So as you know, when we're looking for a group or a, a a list con content, we would have to use a for loop and it shows you how you can do that with Python here. And we use a query method. So query object allow us to use the query method. And so that way we can look at the group of users that we have added like their name and their full name. So you can specify what you wanted to, to find, to search for. OK. 
Okay. So here we, we simply use the print method to show their name and then their full name. You can even show full name and address if you have an, uh, an email address column or phone number and so on. Okay, any question? So with the next step, it also show you how to use query. So yeah, so Michelle asked if you need to have screenshot of this. So yes, when you get to this point, um, you can take one or two screenshot that include the output and shell like this, okay? I wanted to see that you successfully completed your, your building your database, right? Inputting your roles and your instance, okay? Updating it and then be able to query, okay? So for your lab, this is the, the area where you would need to take a screen capture. Okay, I wanted to see the output. And you don't have to do many, you can have a, you know, just a couple showing if you, you did a couple queries. So here earlier, it shows you order by ID. So this is what we can do with, you know, based on the primary key, which is the user ID. We can query by name and full name or other area, right? So it shows you how you can do that. We can just print out, if you wanted their nickname, you can also just pass the nickname there or we can query all, everything. And when you print, you wanted to specify how you wanted to display the content, right? So user in a role and name in a role. Now it tells you here that it showed this in tuples because, right, it's static. It's not, it ha you already added it. So and it treats it as a larger container for that particular instance. So for Ed, right, these are the attributes and it's contained in a tuple. Okay, so maybe a couple screenshot there, a few screenshot in the query area. Then we also can look for label. And note that not all will be all the records. Okay. So here we print out another attribute, which is your name label. And that's going to be one each row. Then next, it shows you how to use alias. And we wanted to declare it as user alias. Okay. So here it tells you that the name given in a full entity such as user, assuming that multiple entity are present in the call of the session query, it can be controlled by alias. So we simply set up a for loop to be able to query that. And it's gonna look at it as string that was declared for these columns.
Okay. Then you can also sort it, okay, or have a range in your query. So here we wanted to look at a specific group of user, right? In this case, we're looking at Wendy and Mary. So here you would then pass the range of your record, your ID number, right? So I'm looking at role, right? This number to this number, that's what I'm querying. So one to three. And then you can also query with the actual keyword arguments, right? Like if we're looking for Ed Jones, so you would use filter by. We saw this earlier as well. So that's gonna apply the filter for the in in the database and it's going to pull the record with whatever that you pass here. Then it shows you how you can use filter. Instead of filter by and you would get the same output pretty much. So there are a couple of the steps showing you how you can filter. You can do it multiple times and you can print it, right? And the operators, they show you how you can use filter operator, right? The way you can, you can use um, operators within your parameter here. You can say it's equal to add, it's not equal to add, right? It's like add, okay? So we can add in operators so that way we can narrow down the data a little better. And if you want, you can try those. You don't have to try those, but that's just inform information. So if you wanted to filter a group, right? Uh, Ed, Wendy, and Jack like this, you can also use a nested list inside a tuple. And you can use the in membership here. So this is a little bit more complex than what you've seen in the last few steps in that we can filter a specific group of people. So We can also do not in, so we can filter, exclude these people or include them. So that's what you're doing is either you can include a group of people or you can exclude a group of people for the column. And then you can also use is, which is the same. So you, if you use like the double equal sign or the is. Now this is different than using 
you know, SQL query, like if you're looking at MySQL, there's some similarity, but for Python, right, because we're using specific library, it's pertaining, it relates to the library that we're using. And then we can do is not, which is the same as the, the not operator and equal sign. You can also use logical operator. Okay. Like and. And then or. So here's the or. Okay. So you would then have to import it. And then you would use the or. You can also match. So if you play with this a little bit more, if you get good at this, right? It, it is very useful, especially as system administrator or developer, right? Database is a, an area that's always lack. They're always looking for people in the skills of database. A lot of people can develop, write program, but not everybody can work with database. So um, it's good to kind of you know, get your experience or earn the skills that you need for the job. Database is used in everything, non-relational, relational database. Okay, um, next is your list and scalar. So I had asked for you to follow the steps to, let's go back here you would go to the step of list and scalars exercise and that will be the end, okay? It doesn't take very long, actually. I have a chat question. Okay, bye, Chris. So follow the steps and then after you go through, right, this part, when it goes to listen scalers after, you know. So this kind of give you a little bit more information on how you would use query, okay? And why you're using what is query dot first mean. So we first result in the scalar. You would have, you can use one. Sometimes some of those will give you error because the table doesn't have the, the, the criteria that you asked for, so it would give you a trace back. So check out the scalar, and if you want, you can go all the way to the end. I think it's important to also look at how to build relationship. You can have, you know, multiple tables, and then how you can correlate them and query data. So this tutorial can go a lot longer, but I want you to, to just only get to the end of Listen Scalar and that will be part of our lab. So the screenshot that you're gonna provide for me would be just your, your query area, right? But make sure that we be able to create the database, add content to our database, and then query. And that's all you need for networks mostly. Um, and then if you wanted to go further for the advanced stuff, you're welcome to do that, okay? I mean, I can take, extract this and put it on a document and give it to you, but I think they do a really good job of explaining everything. So that's why I link everything together. Um, I had put together an actual, you know, when I wrote this lab, I wanted to do like a web interface 
load it on the web server and then to be able to call for some of the module. But there's some issues with when I was testing it and I just didn't have time to kind of just build it out. But if I do later on, I might implement it for your project or something like that that you can do. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So um, for this week, you have until the end of the week to finish the lab. So you can take your time on that. Okay. So I had set it to be due on the 25th, so you don't have to complete it until later on. Uh, or if you finish it tonight or today, you can just upload your screen capture and then submit it. Don't forget that you have a homework assignment, which, you know, it's not very long. And if you go over the, all the old assignments and the notes, you'll be able to find the answers. And if you have the book, you can also read that. So make sure that we complete the homework assignment before the end of the week. I will add the content for unit 10. In unit 10, we will have a quiz. We will have a lab, and then I will touch on what we need to do for our project. Okay, is there questions? Um, if you give me like four or five, however you want, at least four or five will be good, okay? If you, because as you query, it might extend down. So maybe do like a few queries on one screen, screen capture and I'll be okay with that, I'm flexible. But if you wanted to do individual picture, that's fine too. It's just gonna be a lot of upload on your end. So try to take like one, one screen capture in your, uh, in your shell for a few query. Yeah, or you can just save it as a title is fine, okay? If you wanted to add comments to it, add text to it, that's okay too. Okay. I mean, when my screen captures are uploaded, my comments will be, I'm lost here. I'm kind of <laughs> lost here. I think I know what I'm doing. Well, the whole point in the tutorial is that it explains to you there. So if you're stuck somewhere and if you're not sure, right? You can go back and you should not just do it because it tells you there, but you should read what it's explaining to you, what you're doing there, okay? And yes, this is not a database class, so it's not truly in-depth, but I, I want you to get the basic on how you would use SQL Alchemy, you know, with that, okay? And then when you're done, okay, after you're done with all your exercises, you can exit out of your, you can, you can uh, exit out of your, your uh, virtual environment. Make sure you do that and then be able to, be able to close your command line. Okay. And if you don't know how to do that or you forgot how, uh, go back to your assignment from earlier this week right? I had talked about how to, you can use deactivate. Yep, Ray says deactivate. Uh -huh. And there are some great tutorials floating around online, but I think they don't document everything. And the best way to practice is to use the creator tutorial, like, you know, the documentation tutorial. So if you like this, I think um, on the other one, they have some exercises. Okay, but you have, it's a little bit more high level on this one. So if you wanted to implement it for like web um, and then how, you know, there's some example on how you can use metadata with Flask here. Okay, so there's some tutorial from Flask SQL Alchemy palettes. Okay, so that will also be a good practice resource if you like. So if you wanted to see on your local server on how it works, 
um, you can take a look at the code here and the instruction. Just keep in mind that, you know, you would have to connect and set it up the configuration properly because code out of the box doesn't always work. Okay, just to let you know. Okay, any, uh, any questions, any comment? All right, that's it for me today. Uh, you can type in your name for the chat. And then if you have any questions, I'm also available in office hour this um, afternoon or tomorrow morning. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Ray. Bye.